The images of Jesus is the image of Jeff. Now oh Jeff is Jesus. Oh my gosh. Speaking of cults. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Mitch. I'm Ashley. Uh, we are continuing Escaping Twin Flames. We're going to see if the flames get hotter in episode two. Will we get burned? Get I mean, we watched back. episode one. How'd no, you feel about our it? episode one. Episode one, um, I don't know. Yeah, it was uh, frustrating. It was a little triggering. A little. My mom said that she started watching this documentary and got too mad and had to stop watching it. <laughs> so that's a if that's a sign for you. Like, yeah, it's 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 a it's a hard watch. Anything like this for me makes me freaking mad. I remember we were watching the uh, Lula Ro, Lula Ro, Lula Lula Ro, Lula Lula Ro, Lula Ro, Lula Ro. Yeah. And that stuff made me mad. That's like MLMs are. I mean, they do weave in some elements of cult like, like environments and behaviors. But it's like that. It's that abuse triangle thing, and definitely seeing some of that in here. And it's it's not easy to watch. No, it's really hard. And if you've had experience with abusive people or cults, cult like environments, this would be a really really difficult watch. Yeah. Or had a family member because they a lot of the interviews are with people that are family members of the people that got taken in by the cult, and it is hard to watch the people that are tr- still trying to help their family members yeah. that are still in the cult. It is just brutal. If you've had experience with cults, I don't know if I'd recommend watching this. So we can allow that to be our disclaimer then. Yeah, disclaimer. Buyer beware. Right. Also, for days after watching it, you may like have feelings that you t- yeah. <laughs> didn't know that you were going to have. We so. don't do feelings in this country. Let's get right into it. <laughs> First lesson of a course in sexual manifestation. Oh, the M word. I don't trust anybody that says manifestation. Yes, the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Boy. Here we are. <laughs> oh, man. Divine masculine. What does that mean? It's about to get nuts. That's what that means. Okay. So at one point, this drive was the master drive for... Oh, she had it because she was high enough up. The instructions were just keep it safe. Oh. That's how they have all the video. Wow. No one's ever had this level of authority over anyone's life, like, ever in your known existence. I'm pretty sure Kim Jong-il has more authority. Well, he's got a narcissism problem, probably, right? Like, yeah, I don't want to diagnose. I'm not yeah. qualified to diagnose anybody, but he's got I ego think issues. You might be able to easily diagnose him as a narcissist. I think any cult leader really is. Yeah, right? we've diagnosed him. He is a narc. <laughs> Jeff is a narcissist. <laughs> we're not quali- We're not qualified to diagnose him as a narcissist. Do you think he's a narcissist? <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> you make my eyes twitch. <laughs> oh, God. We went to Toronto. And it's like, uh, they're just having like a session in Utah. And we had to pretend that we're like some sort wow. of enviable thing. How's it feel to have it all? She's sad just and then pretending, because the people are like, she's crying, she's so happy. That's she not had true. to close her eyes to yeah. say that stuff. I taught them to never give up because that's what oh, you guys man. taught me. <laughs> Brutal. You can see how in pain they look. Yeah. And yet all these people are looking at them like, oh, this is amazing. I was already in my early 40s. The only thing that was really missing from my life was love. I stumbled upon the term twin flames. A lot of these people are coming at it by just like Googling it and then being like, this is me. I wonder if there's any intersectionality with like people that just feel emotions really deeply. You know how like certain people, they they just feel stuff really hard. Like I wonder if there's any connection between that and like seeking out something like this. I really did honestly believe that I was in love with him and that he and I were destined to be together. That's a lot of people thinking about this destiny and and like fate and stuff. He responded, he was kissing me back, but then he just jumped up and just said, I can't do this. We could not be what Jeff referred to as twin flame pussies. Twin flame what? Pussies. (laughs) (laughs) He's such a like dipshit bro. In the way he, he like communicates and stuff too. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Don't be a pussy. Like, what the fuck? You just can't, like, Ugh. just because you have feelings doesn't mean the other person has those yeah. feelings. Yeah. And you can't keep pursuing something like that. Like, they're allowed to feel differently than you, and that can be really hurtful. Mm-hmm. But unrequited love is a thing for a reason. Like, a lot of people end up feeling that him, way. Yeah. Violating the restraining order. Happens to go dancing at the same place where he was. Mm-hmm. Is this the truth, Al? Or is this the story you tell yourself? No, that's that's the truth. I mean, I'm confused. 
Okay. What are you confused about? Because I, I had the same questions. Like, was this really an accident? Is she, is she still lying to herself, right? Yeah. And and I have just as much reason to believe that she's kind of she's just kind of in, in denial there as anything else. But yeah, he's the one that's like, don't let anything get in your way. And then is this part of that like abusive shame cycle where he's like, you're a stalker? Oh yeah, are you really telling the truth? Like you're crazy and shit? Or like what? Is, what the fuck is happening right here? I don't here? know if it's a way too for him to turn it around and be like. Well, we, even if that's the case, like, you couldn't, you know, you shouldn't stay away. He's your twin flame. You shouldn't stay away from him. I don't know. Like, I don't know how they're going to yeah. go about that with someone that actually has, like. A legal protection. Yeah, like, one legal. Of his and he would have legal disciples. liability. The other thing, yeah. too, is, like, is he covering his own ass? Because yep. if he is caught telling her to do stuff, then he could potentially be liable for some of her decisions. Yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly how that would work legally, but it could be, like, a conspiracy to, like, you know, engage in, like, stalking behavior or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not either. Uh, but that's... It's weird. Yeah. Any thoughts? It's really or? weird. I just, like, when she was saying the thing of, like, nobody could tell me anything, like... Yeah. I feel like that's real life. And like, we talked about that last episode a little bit. Like, yeah. you can't, it's, like, pretty impossible to get a cultist out. They kind of have to get their own way out. I mean, and, and you can be there to support them, but other than being there, there's not a lot you can do, like, really rip them out of it. Delusional thinking and stuff. I feel like, I don't know if this is true, like, I don't have, like, professional expertise in this area. Yeah. But I feel like the best thing most people can do is just continue to be there for the person and then as, like, gently... And, like, non-threateningly as possible, continue to point out, like, inconsistencies. Do you but know what I mean? But the inconsistencies aren't always, like, what... If if you're delusional enough, the inconsistencies mean nothing. Yeah. I just you know? feel like it helps if they're ever... If they ever have that kind of, like, light bulb moment where they're yeah. like, oh, maybe this is messed up. I feel like some of those things could end up resonating at that point. Like, maybe not at the point that they're, like, hard in the cult, but maybe later. And then you become, like, as long as you're not doing it in a way where you're pushing them away at the time, then you become someone who's yeah. safe when they're questioning yeah. it versus you being someone that they pushed away and they feel like hates them. But then that's a really dangerous place, too, because they could then, if you do a one misstep, you can be blamed, you know, oh, for yeah, the discomfort absolutely. and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. There's really no, like, I don't know, there's no winning in a situation like that. Yeah. Like, her parents did the best they could just, like, letting her, like, stay there. Yeah, even honestly. though they weren't, yeah. they didn't love the stuff that she was doing. Yeah. It's like, you know, they know that they can't pull her out of it. So, yeah. at least she has somewhere where, like, they know that she is. A safe place. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and she's, it's not every night. person in her life is a cultist. That's right. probably easier to get out when you have one or two people yeah. on the outside. Regardless Absolutely. of how, even, like tattered those relationships are yeah 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 it's just intense i like can't believe you've got somebody who's like a stanford educated scientist mm -hmm. who this is happening to like it just completely blows up the idea that you talked about this last time too yeah. but completely blows up the idea that people that end up in cults are stupid yep. or gullible or like you know what I mean like that's not what happens yeah so you're asking me questions you're still talking over me that doesn't really help you in class you're talking over me like god he's trying to get me to admit to stalking so that he doesn't have any liability yep. there we go <laughs> yep yep so did you love yourself all the way along then is that not an act of bravery and courage? It's not brave or courageous to stalk yeah. someone. I guess it improves it. It gives me enormous trust in you. Like the needing to prove yourself. And sometimes by doing like really fucked up shit. Also like a lot of cult masters will have dirt on all their people. He's got dirt on her. She's a stalker and yeah. he's got dirt on her now. And he's one of the only people that's supporting her no matter what. Yep. Somehow that turned into everybody being told that their life purpose was to work for Jeff and Shalia. Free Somehow. labor is powerful. Some of you will create ads and attract people. There's all kinds of things that you can do here. This just reminds me of Scientology so yeah. heavily. Yeah. Sea Org. Because they're growing their business, and so I volunteered. There's nothing sexier than uh, a, a hot career. What's a hot career? Apparently worked for him. I brought up that I wanted to do music. It was immediately, like, rejected. I didn't want those sick beats. Working in media. 
Why not? Jeff created this thing called the mind alignment process, which was like the mere exercise on steroids. I am Dr. Christine Kay. And then they hire a doctor. She suggested there was sexual trauma that happened when I was like a kid. So my like implanted best memories. belief, I don't think I've ever actually had anything like that in my childhood. Isn't that like what happened with the satanic like panic? Whole, like, they had like implanted memories basically? Yeah. Any groups do this kind of introspective exercise, which they say is there to help you, but it's actually there to tear apart the cell. You can so easily so manipulate cell. someone mm -hmm. that way. And if you believe that, because a lot of families do create trauma, yeah. it, but it's like if you view your family as like the sole cause of harm, then you're yeah. not gonna wanna, you, you wanna be safe. Our vibration down. I don't yeah. wanna say everyone who's having this problem you know, chuck your family and friends out of the window. That's that whole, I don't want to say, but I am saying. I'm not telling you yep. to cut yep. out everyone else in your life, but. But, dot, 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 wow. Seems like they're not great for you. Sent a long email telling her that my husband, Eddie, and I are hoping to try, start trying to build a family soon. Oh, I feel bad for yeah, her. Yeah, I do too. I cannot give you what you think you want from me. We don't have a relationship and I made my choice and I ask that you please respect it. Thank you, Stephanie. And she's still in the Over cult at this point. Now. Like she's- And what do you do? Cause she's set a yeah. boundary yeah. that then her sister's respecting, yeah. but her sister feels like Sexual that's being done in an unhealthy way. What are you gonna do? They're an adult. One day about how to fish for clients for a map sessions. Oh honey, people are lined up out your door. Oh, he's rubbing his hands together. It's just like- it's a man that's already tried to sell himself as a cancer healer. Yeah. In order to take money it's, from people. He he went from preying on people that were physically ill to people preying on people that have like an emotional or spiritual wound. Yeah. Ugh. Within the military in general, you are always to respect an officer. So there was kind of like this invisible pressure of I'm gonna do what she tells me to do. This is like people using their power mm -hmm. for like yeah. awful purposes. It's so ego driven. And they bring her in to like fucking start mind fucking everyone. It's wild. Like my head was spinning. Yeah. I also got therapy from a bad therapist. <laughs> Let me tell you. They're not all good. Jeff and Shalia told us to eat foods that would ground us. We made it into a daily meal plan called Divine Dish. They literally want to control down to what people what they're eat. eating? And sell what people eat. Do you know what I mean? Oh my God. Food that my company, Divine Dish, procures. Oh my God. It's a full, this is fucking weird. You're even, even what they're eating? Yeah. A sandwich. Most of the meals are at this point he knows they have a they have a captive audience and yeah. they're just how can we milk this? I gained 70 pounds within nine months. Shit. It was shocking. She's being told what to eat for every meal. Yeah, it's like the opposite of Nexium. Right, and where like they this, were like, starved. Yeah, and she said like she didn't feel like she had control over her body. She feels like she has lost control over everything. Yeah, and when you feel like you have nothing then you just do what you're told. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. He's such a gross person. Our first year in business, I think we did about $25,000. It's like mind boggling to me. And they're There's, just bragging. It's all from the same pool of people. They're impoverishing yeah. this yeah. pool of people yeah. and then making sure that everything these people are doing yeah. is what they're telling them to do. There aren't endless amounts of clients. The more coaches, there are, the harder it is to make money. That's like an MLM structure, yeah, essentially. Yeah. 85 inch TV screen, you know, I could purchase one of those every single week. I mean, they're cheap nowadays. <laughs> they are cheap, but still, <laughs> that's messed up. Yeah. And he's just showing that then to all these he's people that are, that are yeah. bankrolling that lifestyle for him. That's so fucked. Me in a post nominating me and Colby as the new CEOs of Twin Flames Universe. Deflect responsibility. <laughs> mm hmm. Right, no wow. actual power. In fact, I was actually told that I was just an admin. I've got the solution. Yes, what's that? We're gonna turn part of our company into a religion. When he says we're gonna turn part of our company into a religion is it's kind of been like mirroring one the entire time anyway, but it's yeah. like whatever you can do to make money, he doesn't care. And now he's like, well, I can exploit this for, for more money. Yeah, he's literally like, I don't have to pay people. 
if part of this is religion, uh, then I don't have to pay people. And then he doesn't have to pay taxes, which means yeah. he doesn't have to pay the government. So then he is... Legally. Imp- yeah, legally. Impoverishing yeah. all these people. And then they're potentially needing to reach out for public assistance benefits that he's not contributing yeah. to. He's a scab on society. That's awful. Yeah. And they just do not care. Church of Union. Oh, my God. But then it got more and more heavily God-centered. Big to me, in like a very like clear as day voice, like the images of Jesus is the image of Jeff. No, oh Jeff is Jesus. Oh, my gosh. I said that first episode. Right? Yep. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you were not wrong that that's the direction it was going. Self and put it next to that image of you know the supposed Jesus, and uh, it's it's this, it's the same person. It's the same person. Well, he's the same. He's Jesus. Those images were images of me, not a, a Jewish guy from Israel, but blue eyes. Fuck, man. Oh. He's the second coming, everyone. Oh my god. And she's banging the Christ! Of course, a lot of us were turned off by that idea. Yeah, I would imagine they would be turned off. Yep. And you're all in at that point, so it's so hard. I am absolutely fucking flabbergasted they made it past this stage of going full church, I am Jesus, second coming. You, it's it's Ooh. so, like, it's piece by piece, though. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's a big piece. It's that's big. a leap into the but deep end. Already, they're already making people eat what they want them to eat. They're already yep. making them have sessions with a person who's not Mind a therapist, control, who's man. pretending to be a therapist. Oh Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah, you're right. There's a ramp up. There's you a know? ramp up. By the time it's this this nuts, you've been in this community yeah. for two years. And you've accepted things yeah. over and over and over again that you wouldn't have accepted yeah. at the yeah. outset. And this poor girl is just trying to get her sister out. Yeah. At this point, my twin flame was in a new relationship with somebody else. A man. He's avoiding oh. the truth of who he is. Like, he's not even such a classic people love to go to that right they said that my twin flame uh is feminine acting because i was taking his masculinity energy away from him so it's her fault that's ridiculous but of course they're gonna blame it on her well that's the entire structure blame it on yourself and people already go to that so you're just exploiting a natural tendency of a lot of people yeah like okay maybe i'll just email him or like you don't want to really do it do you that's the difference in energy you cannot force yourself on people like this yeah. He explicitly directs people to stalk, sexually harass, yeah. and ruin other people's lives and theirs. He called me yes. delusional. He said, we're, we're done. Yes. You have to stop. you got to stop. I did not believe. That's all fair. That's... you experienced from the beginning of class until now only positive, only love. Have you experienced only fear? Mixture of both. Liar! Sorry, that's my... Oh, my God. <laughs> Andrew's lying. Andrew's lying. I, I want to... Fucking go off. <laughs> wow. You need to heal this now. This is your fault. You're scum of the earth. That's how you're spoken to in coaching. It's like, uh, Stop talking, please. Let me make my point. Thank you. You're uncomfortable. Wow, he's so rude. I'm not being rude. Oh, you're not. Oh, okay. oh I'm feeling so uncomfortable right now. <sighs> if you had a problem or called him out on his insults, you're ultimately calling yourself out and you would need to mirror it. So you can never have a problem ever with the way someone else is treating you. It's well, always back on you. you. But it's everyone else yeah, too, because it's right. your twin flames, they're wrong. Yeah. If only you had a different outlook, they'd be treating you different. Yeah. It's always your fault. No, you're just being a whiny little bitch. They're abusing people and then saying that they should be stoic, basically. Like, I can't believe people are paying to be yeah, talked to like yeah. this. And his reply to that was, um, how dare you question your God. Yeah, no one wants to be yeah, you don't want to be like publicly that. shamed. Absolutely. What happens in a high control group like this is that it's not just the leader who abuses the members, but in the end, everybody in a way ends up being a perpetrator. The members abuse each other. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> because they're groomed and trained That's to go familiar. after each other, to report on each other. Oh my God. Abuse becomes, in a sense, it's really true. Right? It's true. Yeah. It's true. Some people enjoy that too. They enjoy yeah. feeling power over other people. Yeah. They enjoy that kind of like structure. Yeah. Some people, I would say a lot of people are victims even when they're harming other people. Some people come in and they're like little, little narcissists just like the top, you know, and they're thriving in that. 
not that different from a corporate environment. No. <laughs> no, it's not. And I was like, well, like, if I punch you in the face, am I giving you a gift and telling you to mirror exercise it? You can emotionally yep. manipulate someone, and that's totally legal. But you put your hands on them. Yeah. Even a little bit. But then I wake up one morning, I'm kicked out of the Facebook group. All of my clients were told not to talk to me. In a way, yep. in a I weird way. Isolated. It's a gift they gave it her. It is. It in is. In a way, though. Because yep. then she can separate herself from it. Entirely. And she's so much better off. Yep. So it's, much better off. It's a hard transition off. out of that, but you eventually... Find Shocking, a safe place honestly, out, outside. Eventually. That they were like yeah. willing to cut her off so like infrequently, I well, think. But she was dangerous to them. You, you heard the way she was talking, which was that she um she was really questioning it. She was yeah. like she was like finding the 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 holes in the logic. Yes. And what we're not seeing is probably some conversations that she had with like Jeff and Shalia or other members where the she was starting to point out cracks. And yeah. if you point out cracks in the institution and you have like a good logical underpinning, yes. then you are going to be completely cast out. And that's because da it's dangerous for the same way that I was yeah. saying it was dangerous before. If you start pointing out those cracks, yes, maybe initially people might be yeah. mad at you. They might deny it initially, but in the back of their head at night oh when God. they're alone, that stuff can sometimes oh. ruminate and they can be like, you know what, that is true this piece was hypocritical or this does seem unhealthy mm -hmm. or whatever. And then that could potentially lead other people to leave. And that's their income source. Mm -hmm. That's their source of everything, right? Like they need these that people. That reminds me of something. What? I was the way somebody contacted me after like a year after I left, like being like, I saw all this and I was afraid to speak out. Yeah. And, uh, and all the conversations I had, you know, like like these people thrive in these environments where their image is protected. Yeah. And you poke holes in it and some stuff will unravel. Yeah. No matter how hard they try. Yeah. And that's the ultimate threat is that other people see how paper thin the veneer is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what she was starting to do. And that's why she got booted out. And they'll do anything to discredit the yeah. person that's bringing up these things. Yeah. And they'll do... They'll rely on anything, saying that that person in this in this case, they're saying that she's got moral issues that she needs to yeah. address within herself. You know, if you get upset, which like on a lot of people end up upset because they're in situations yeah. where they're being mentally and emotionally abused, in this case, financially it's abused. obviously upsetting. It's upsetting. Yeah. So then they'll lose their cool. And then they point to that. Yeah. Oh, this people, this You're person. You're being hysterical. Right. You're being they ridiculous. lost it. Yeah. So they're not to be trusted now. Yeah. Because clearly they can't handle their own emotions. Yeah. I mean, they'll do anything to discredit people, even if it means cutting them off entirely because there's yeah. such a danger to that structure that that's, they've created. That's the ultimate sign that they're a danger, too, because you want to keep them in. Yeah. You don't want them leaving with the knowledge that they have. Yeah. And you want them able to pull people out. Cause, but what's better to take somebody out of a cult than somebody that understands that cult? Yeah. Um, that reminds me of the subversive person thing with, like, uh, what's her face? Just any Leah Remini. Leah Remini and like on any like subversive person, they have a label for it. You don't yeah. talk to people that are outside of the uh, outside of the organization because they're a, they're the biggest threat to the people within the organization getting siphoned yeah. off. Um, and that's a, that's a sign that they're that they are that you know. You'll they, see there's no that. reason they cut them out. You see that in cults, but you see it in like cult like places yeah. too. Like a lot yeah, of absolutely. workplaces end up functioning kind of like this, and you'll see that. Where someone leaves and then leadership does everything they can to discredit that person because well, they they're were disgruntled. bad at their job. Right. Oh, they were they were yep. they weren't as good as they thought they were. You exactly. experienced some stuff like that. Absolutely, I did. Yeah. I was in a work environment that was very cult like, and not just me, but when other people left as well, if they had any level of complaint with yeah. the company, then leadership would talk about how. They weren't good at their job in yeah. the first place, which was not true in many yeah. cases. Yeah, sometimes contradictory to like performance evaluations. Yeah, the absolutely. Um, that they were, History. you know, emotional in yeah. like the case of women leaving. Of course, that <laughs> that's always the easy one. <laughs> yeah, emotional women. Right. Uh, you know that they were just disgruntled. Yeah. They were having, in some cases, they were having mental health issues. Yeah. And now I look back on that, that and mine. I'm like. I don't know what of what I was told about people was accurate because yeah. they really had to, in order to pay us as little as they did for as many hours as we worked, they had to maintain that facade. Yeah, because otherwise, I mean, yeah. yeah. If we you had understood the value that we had external to the organization and how much we could have gotten paid, how much more time we could have spent with our families, we never would have stayed. Yeah. Josh, he had schizoaffective disorder. He was not getting the support 
he needed Oh, that's sad. So sad. If Josh had a really high, happy, supportive, loving environment oh, that God. was consistent, no. he could actually no. work through this. It's your fault. It's not, oh no. Oh my God, that's so garbage. I mean, yes and no, right? Like people can work no. through mental health issues, but no, it's not the responsibility no. of everyone around them to yeah. help create the environment that they can do that yeah. in. It's not I, their fault that the person isn't getting there. People with schizophrenia disorder probably almost invariably need medication. I know schizophrenia, you need medication. You can't just have a happy environment and, and be okay with schizophrenia. Yeah, like, and you need mental health help, like yeah. consistent support from a psychiatrist. Yeah. Like the, it's a medical yeah. issue. Yeah, absolutely. It's not something that you can just will away. You, yeah. It's the most traumatic time in my life. It's very hard for me to talk about. I'm so glad somebody got the videos of all this and was able to share them because this is so fucking horrible. And it's one of those yeah. things where unless you have documentation, no one will believe you. No. Like uh, when she contacted me about it, I told I, I communicated like from my perspective, you just need to continue to ground. It's really important for you to Absolutely. ground. And she's over here sharing. This is so immoral. This this fucking piece of shit, Christine Emmerich, going and sharing all this crap, specific, this is, how is this not illegal? I don't know. How is what she's doing not illegal? I don't know. I, she I don't should know. be in behind fucking bars. I mean, they all should, but what she's doing right now is fucking horrible. Yeah. I know, because she's portraying herself as a mental health professional. She so should be in jail. People have trust in her, and they're uh, believing her. This person was asking for mental health help and she was being told by coaches to do the mirror exercise. Um, the mirror exercise isn't going to help when you're fucking depressed. This is horrible. It's claiming to be scientific and it's just not. Nobody there is licensed to be psychologically treating anyone. So dangerous. I was so sick to my stomach. And that's when I felt like I, I can't. That's good. That's good. Traumatic events like that can break people out too. Wait, just if it's awful. like it's too far, it goes too far, and you're just like, fuck this. And then I realized one day I still have access to like a bunch of their shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go for her. Yeah. I mean, I definitely had some fun with it where I could. <laughs> they always talked about choosing yourself, choosing your twin flame, choosing God. Well, the choosing truth, yourself is getting the fuck out. You know, choosing yeah. yourself yeah. is getting the hell out of there. Oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm not going to hide. I'm not. I've already lost my daughter. I know a lot of people that were afraid to speak out related to the shit I saw. Yep. Yep. Because threats. Yeah. Like intimidation, In bribery. Too, like it was a lot of people. And like this was a lot of people's employment. Yeah. So you're yeah. talking about taking away their like yeah. salary, their health insurance. Yeah. Now I have none of those things. I do. So it's okay. I know. I know. But yeah, <laughs> my life would be ruined. Ruin. I would be on the street right now. Yeah. If I didn't have your support. Yeah. yeah. I think your family would have supported you yeah. too. Yeah. It's hard to ask your family when you've burned your life to the ground. Yeah. For and they were quote unquote haters as we labeled them. Yep. That's what people do. Yep. They have to villainize the people that got out. And they'll isolate you from every single person you knew. My role as the head of security was to kind of keep an eye on the people who had already left the group under, you know, yep. bad terms. Yeah, that happened to me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I had a bunch of people friend me on social media and then mysteriously block me and unfriend me because I didn't, like, they're, like, former coworkers and stuff. Yeah. And then suddenly, I just, you know, they disappear. Because yeah. they've been, because I've been observed yeah. for at least two plus years. 110 names on this list. Once you well, made hot. the block list, you were officially cast out. And if it's not a strict rule... It's a perception thing, There's right? There's like a, sometimes an unspoken understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or like a, you would be hurting the group if you continue to talk to this yeah. person. You found that with people. Yeah. We're like spilling the tea. I'm giving you some tea right now. Like I haven't ever spilled Oh, you want some tea, motherfucker? <laughs> you want some tea? Vice abandoned reality to call me a cult leader. Oh, Vice. I wish Vice were still around. Ugh, me oh, too. So Rip good. Vice. And that no one really reads or cares about. 
Sorry, Sarah. You do something more meaningful. No, I do think people enjoy reading about cults, actually. People love that shit. Hopefully, don't let us know. And Stephanie's mom is clearly a psycho. She yep. seems like the chillest mom in the world. Yeah. That's what they do, though. They call people yeah. outside the group abusive. Yeah. And many of them were even further away from their twin flames than they were when yeah. they originally started the group. Yeah, because you're you're telling people to do like really unhealthy, toxic shit yeah. that harms you and the people you're chasing. And you're in a very small pool of people. Yeah. And at a certain point, you're so yeah. in that that the only people you could connect with are people that are also in that. All these signs to point to a person, but it's not their true twin flame. Were confirmed by Jeff and Chalia actually aren't their twin flame. So God was wrong? They changed the rules where your twin flame absolutely had to be a participant in the group. It's gotten to, it needs to be insular. Oh my God. How are you going to have someone join the cult with you to be your twin flame? Yeah. Like that is unrealistic. I started to kind of look around and we're primarily women and we're running out of men. So who could your twin flame be? Respect people's sexuality, even if that's asexuality. Yeah. They wanted me to be some oh, LGBT God. poster child, and that's when the love bombing really- Love bombing. That's a phrase we haven't used yet. It's classic. You are either masculine or feminine energy. You're not both. So weird how heavily they're leaning into like binaries in terms of masculine and feminine yeah. energy. Because they can't lean into it with like, identity anymore yeah. either masculine or feminine 100 percent you can perceive the masculine energy like a penis giving a gift giving a i don't want to see him making that motion i don't i don't need to see that you can look androgynous sport that look but it doesn't mean that you can look androgynous but that's a lie right wow 100 percent wow. masculine or 100 percent feminine ridiculous Nobody who studies gender in a serious way believes that all human beings can be sorted into some sort of essential masculine, some sort of essential feminine. Any social science. Doesn't make any they, sense. They're gradients all over, you know? Even in biology. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just another control thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to be a man? Those beady little eyes, man. It's like a rat. Homosexuality doesn't even really exist. You just, if you're really two masculine energies having sex, you're just shaking hands. <laughs> what? what? You're just shaking hands? What does what? that mean? What does it even mean? Imagine listening to a straight white guy telling you, trying to tell you about like your homosexual relationships, you know? So arrogant that he feels like he can tell people that. Hey, like you're not, you're not gay or you're not bi. I was questioning myself like, I wonder if they're gonna try to say that I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm very not no. straight. It's like this like third grade uh, boy understanding of how lesbians work. Which one's the man? I don't like, know. Fucking ridiculous. Why they needed to do this? I don't. Well, like ultimate control well, leading, over people's bodies, including like I don't know. in the sex that they have. It's a solution to the to the problem that they that they don't. They can't get their people twin flamed up, so they're gonna twin flame with each other. But why so can't you just have like two women twin flaming? I don't know. This guy's got some fucking mental health problems. Trina, you're totally sexually satisfied by Anne's spirit penis. Yes. <laughs> the spirit penis. Okay. Spirit penis. No spirit vaginas because they don't have enough men in the group. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Wow, this is dark, man. I feel bad laughing. Yeah, it's awful. It's like yeah. uncomfortable yeah. laughter. Yeah, no, yeah. You know? Yeah, more of that. It is not their fucking place to decide what gender somebody yeah. is or what they're meant to align with. It is not their fucking place. Yes. You talk about like the levels of control too. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. At first, it's just like telling them to. And it's like not just deeper and deeper, but in more facets. So you're yeah. getting more people with that. Yeah. Like if I didn't get you with the financial control, because maybe let's say like your family has money, so you mm -hmm. wouldn't have been taken in by the financial control. Then maybe it's the food control that yeah. got you because you have issues with like body image or like what you're putting in your mouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people have like things akin to eating disorders, things like that. So now I'm controlling everything you're putting in your mouth. 
And then I'm controlling how you view your body, like internally, inside your, your own gender. head. It's really who you are you, as a person. Yeah, how you've you been, view you've who been you are. You've been mapped to death by their fake psychologist, <laughs> yeah. and then you're being told that you're not even straight anymore, or yeah. you're not actually gay because you're, there's a spirit penis in your relationship. Yeah. Like it's so bizarre, but it's it also bizarre. makes perfect sense in the in the frame of, and that's actually a hallmark of a lot of cults, is controlling who you're partnered with and trying to be as insular as possible. Yeah. Um, that's, that's not abnormal at all. Well, because like, meeting someone outside of this and them having ideas outside of this would be dangerous to the group. Any yeah. logical ideas outside of this would be threatening. Absolutely. This entire framework, it's, it's totally Because someone might say to you, hey, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, healthy. I love you, but yeah. this shit's weird. I don't know. I had a bunch of people telling me they supported me and my life was turning to absolute shit. It's hard, I think, to see it, though, when yeah. people that you trust and people you perceive to be in positions of power over you or who do have positions of power over you are telling you things are so much better we're so supportive we're so great everyone outside of here not so great they're the ones that are making your life bad they can also be scapegoats for why things aren't going well well it's not going well because these things and right but at this point for a lot of these people they've isolated themselves and they have nothing but the members of the group so then yeah well then there's another there's another created false like um, enemy, which is that, well, you're, that wasn't your original Tim, Twin Flame. Your Twin Flame is one of these members. And then the struggle is going to be with your sexuality and doing the mirror work. Oh, it's because it, you're not like maybe happy with this person you're paired up with. And then like, oh, but you need to fucking like, like judge yourself some more. Like there's always a, there's always room for a perpetually new like scapegoat. Yep. Well, scapegoatism, you, man. You have to have that because you have to have the struggle yeah. because otherwise these people aren't going to continue paying for the classes, they're going yeah. to continue going to the therapy it's because work you growth. can't ever heal them. Yeah. But you can't push them so far that they leave. It's like a delicate well, balance. Well, but it's crazy how far you can push them without leaving them. Yeah. Like, it's, it, like yeah. seeing this is, I, mean, I know it gets worse still, so. It does. Oh, my God. Jeff and Shalia spent a night channeling. Oh, no. Jeff and Shalia had channeled around 20 new twin flame pairings within the group. Man, she's been having a hard time with this interview. I think she feels real guilty. Yeah, she participated in so much of this. I knew that this was somehow like a, a test. Like I was being watched to see if I would if I would do it. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. Does that mean that Victoria is really a guy? Victoria is the masculine? And Keely says, no, you are. Can't imagine the feeling that comes with being told you're not who you say you are. Yeah. You're not who you believe yourself to be. Yeah. Yeah. And from people that you trust and believe at this point. It's got to be a massive feeling yeah. of dysphoria, I know. Yeah. Because like, it's, it is forced, too. Yeah. She's never questioned it before. And now suddenly she's being told, you're not even a woman in a way. You know, yeah. Because they're using, they're using different terms. But they're you're saying the divine that, masculine yeah. in the relationship. That's so You're the fuck, spirit man. penis. You're the spirit penis. How would you feel about being told you have a spirit penis when you don't have a penis? And you don't want one. I just like. I don't know. This is. Oh. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Watching this. Because in a way. It's so weird. Because in a way it's like. Well. They're being supportive of people. Who is? Well, no, no, no. Listen. Okay. They're, they're being supportive of people being in LGBTQ relationships. They're okay. being supportive of people potentially um, knowing that their gender that doesn't match their uh like biological body they you were you had born that into. one woman who's trans and she Absolutely. was like i didn't i i like kind of needed a place to belong there's so many groups that are very unsupportive of trans yeah. people existing so, so that's kind surface, of kind of an exceptional thing in some way yeah and yeah. at the surface it looks like they're supporting trans yeah. people they're supporting the lgbtq plus community in general but they're actually not at all yeah it's like they're, quite they're, the opposite yeah because they're, they're dictating yeah. your gender identity yeah. but in a different way they're it's saying the we stuff. choose yeah who is trans right. and who is not in a yeah. way because jeff is god because jeff is god and he can do that right and really has nothing to even do with that like i don't think that it has everything to do with just making matches happen as i mean like yeah like, as nothing like he doesn't even the, the sexuality thing the gender the gender expression thing is just a vehicle for him to make money yeah and that for me is nuts yeah Everything. Controlling every aspect of someone's life is a vehicle for him to make money. 
And I mean, as a source of like power and control, because is at what the end of the day, like. if he was making less money, he'd still be doing it because he needs that control. Yeah. You know, I mean, certainly the money is big, and we're gonna see some more of that in episode three. But like, it's so frustrating watching all of this. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not speechless, but I don't even, I kind of don't know what to say right now. I'm. It's a lot. I'm mad. I just like, I want to say things I can't say here. Basically, I'm so fucking mad right now. I like, know. oh man. I okay, know, but so the definition of a, the definition of a cult is a system of religious v- veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. A relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. A yeah. misplace or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. As in a cult of personality. I think on the right hand side, though, this is more right. Cult is the term in most contexts pejorative for a relatively small group, which is typically led by a charismatic and self appointed leader who excessively controls its members, requiring unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices which are considered deviant. Okay, so there's a definition. You decide. Let us know in the comments is this a cult? In your opinion. In your opinion. Based on the information that yeah. you have. And I, that's why I so often go back to the term cult-like. And I've really, yes. when I when I read about this, I after leaving my environment, I really attached to it. Because it's also this idea of like how big does it have to be to be a cult. And I read another thing that said it only has to be two people really yeah. to be a cult. But cults can be small. They can be fairly large. But um, a lot of things mimic this this definition of a, what is a cult. Yeah. You know, it's really like, like, uh, so if you, you can describe things as cult like, and that's relatively accurate. Yeah. Um, and I guess I won't describe anybody as cult like in this environment because I don't get sued, but like. No, I think you can say cult like, and I think that's okay. fine. I think. I mean, it's kind of like some, some, like, some, like, psychological things where it's difficult to pinpoint. Right. Like, what is this, like, what is depression? What is, like, anxiety and stuff? Like, there's psychological things. And, like, pinning it down is difficult, you know? Yeah, like, what big, is a cult? There's like, a big gray area. And I think it's tough, too, because you have things like Scientology. A lot of yeah. people would argue that's a religion. A lot of people would argue it's a cult. Well, and then you start talking about cult and how widespread can you label other religious groups absolutely. that way. Absolutely. Sure. Sometimes it's just a religion you don't like. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's tough. And then you also have, like, big corporations that mirror this. I mean, a lot of MLMs mirror this type of thing. Yeah. And people would say they're a cult. Um, okay, I'm a little loose with the term cult. I call a lot of things cult. I don't know. I mean, I don't think you're wrong based on the the statement. A lot of things are cult-like in our society. <laughs> Where else do you see cult-like environments? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. This thing bothers me. Like, this documentary bothers me. Like, it really, having been... Like, having been around you when Mm -hmm. you were in the group of people that you were in um, that was, like, certainly cult-like. Yeah. You know? There were at least, like, 15 people. At least. That's the lowest number, I think, that were in a cult-like environment. Yeah. I was pulled into that. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, some of this is very, very triggering to watch. Yeah. No, for me, too. um, Because we went through hell. Because of that yeah. environment and those people. Yeah. And it was yeah. as being like someone who was not in it. Yeah. And then like loving someone and being married to someone who was in it. I mean, it was so hard. Yeah. And uh, I, I said earlier that like for me, it's like I often look at like what was my life like before, during and after that. Yeah. Before it was complicated, but I was happy. Yeah. During that, it was the worst Three, four-ish years of my life, the darkest days of my life. And when I got out and then was completely cut off from every member, even tangentially related to that group, my life has been fucking amazing. But it was hard, I think, while you were in it for you to be able to see that you were going to be okay and be able to, like, have a good life outside of it. I I was hopeless. Well, and in my perspective, you were so reliant on them. I mean, they created an environment where you felt like you couldn't live without that group of people. I felt powerless. Yeah. I remember remember thinking at one point being like, I have no power. Fuck it. I like, what am I to do? I'll just do whatever they tell me. I remember literally thinking that being like, like, what, where, what can I do? Where can I go? Like, like I have felt like I had absolutely no control over everything. Yeah. Well, being told I had total control. 
Yeah. You know, but being told that it was all, it's it's that crazy, that mirror exercise thing. And I didn't connect that until right now, but being told that like, like the power's in your hands, the power's in your hands, it's your responsibility and having none yeah. and being so fucking psychologically manipulated and abused. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and totally like, it's like your job, your life, your, your, your everything. And then as like a loved one that's watching that happen, you're watching this person become someone totally different. Like you don't mm, even recognize yeah. them anymore. It felt like body snatchers. Yeah. Like it literally felt like I didn't know yeah. you. And then I got to the point where I wondered if I'd ever known you and it was rough. And then having to consistently remind myself and I wasn't even in it. I was outside. I was external to it entirely. Having to remind myself that I wasn't crazy Yeah. and that what I like I knew where my center was and like I knew that I wasn't the one changing and that the things that were happening were not healthy and not, not right was hard. Yeah. Like really hard. Awful. Yeah. I feel for the family members that have like participated in this because, um, it is just absolutely brutal. Yeah. It's been what? Like three and a half years now? About four years, I think. Yeah. And since the start of it. I, Five? well, since no. you got out. Since I got out. Yeah, no, three it's been like, it like six, seven years since it started, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, like, three and a half years out of it. Yeah. And I still, like, struggle. Yeah. And I, I mean, know you yeah. do, too. We talked about it today. That's why yeah. we're intense. Like, it's just like, I, I'm going to have, we're going to have scars forever. Yeah. You know, like. But it's so important, I think, yeah. to, like, understand that this type of thing happens. And it happens to all kinds of people. Yeah. Um, and like be able to identify some of the signs that it's happening. And then like, honestly, it just, you know, I feel like provides support for people that have been victims of this kind of thing or people that, you know, they can feel connected to somebody else who has had a family member go through this type of thing. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Oh man, just a light ending. Thank just you for a tuning light in. Ending. Yeah, thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for sharing in our collective trauma today. Yeah, this is Trauma Dump with Ashley and Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, are you crying? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's okay. I love you. But like, seriously, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you've experienced something like this or your your family has, like, it unfortunately this affects a lot of people. Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna watch uh, like the last episode. Um, so like, subscribe, come back next time, come back next time for more of this fun content. Yeah. Uh, it's probably gonna be heavy next time too. Like, oh, I'm not gonna be, lie. Yeah, yeah. Like we'll it's, it it's goes. a heavy, it's a heavy thing, but it's important to stuff yeah. to talk about. Um, all right. Well, see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Then I got it knocked and I started going, Wah! Ridiculous. all those tearjerkers. Hey, we're going to go on a cruise this summer. You should come with us.